I feel like, you know, I've kind of been given a new lease on life and I would like to impart that on other people, the joy that you can get from doing this and to becoming the best that you can be. And that's different for everyone, it doesn't matter what, there's no end point, it's a journey. In 1981, the Iron Man race moved from Oahu to the rugged lava fields of the Kona coastline on the island of Hawaii, where the World Championship continues to take place today. Last year's record-breaking race welcomed some 2,500 athletes from 82 countries, marking the largest international field in race history. Qualifying for Kona is the achievement of a lifetime. It represents months often years of dedication and sacrifice. To earn their spot, racers have finished in an Ironman at the top of their age group at one of the many Ironman races around the world. The pros must also earn a coveted spot by posting top results among their peers. In the Ironman Quest for Kona Season 3, fueled by Gatorade Endurance, we follow five athletes as they take on a personal challenge to qualify for the most prestigious race in all of triathlon, the Ironman World Championship in Kailua, Kona, Hawaii. Canadian professional triathlete Lionel Sanders finished second in the 2017 Ironman World Championship. With just three miles to go, he was passed on the run by Patrick Langa of Germany. He was unrecognizable from the Lionel Sanders of 2009. That Lionel had lived for years in a dark place of addiction and despair. I was in a, you know, crappy place in my life, abusing drugs and alcohol. I needed a change in my life, and it popped into my head to do an Ironman triathlon. I didn't know the distance or anything. I had to Google it, and I was like, wow, that is amazing. That is so far from what I could imagine doing right now. That's perfect. That's what I need to take me out of this place to give me a new life. And so then I called my mom, I got her credit card number, signed up for the race, trained for the race. But when I Googled it the first time, what I saw was a picture of Craig Alexander winning the 2009 Ironman World Championship with the Australian flag in one hand, the glasses, the visor, the thing draped, the, you know, gritting the teeth. I wanna do that too. I wanna go from, I Googled it, you know, in a crap place in the basement, and I wanna go and I wanna go right to there and make it a reality. I just think that that would just be a true full circle and a true transformation and, and show the true power of, you know, when you, when you decide to change your life, you can and you can truly go to the top. Lionel knew he was on the right path, that he belonged among the world's best. He felt that same sense of potential and possibility standing as the runner-up on the Kona podium in 2017. That result made him hungrier than ever. So coming into 18, everyone knew how bad I wanted it, and well, Patrick did his half, and I failed miserably at my half of being a contender. And so, you know, it was massively humbling. He put his head down and went to work, training harder than ever. Then one morning, he woke up and couldn't bear any weight on his left leg he fractured his sacrum. I got like infatuated with wanting to do like huge efforts in practice, but eventually the body is going to say enough is enough, man, and you have to rest. This is your duty. If you want to get back to racing well and you want to continue to do this as a career, you're going to just have to accept what is and, and, and heal. He couldn't run for three months, so he shifted focus to his primary weakness, the swim. He didn't ride his bike outside for two and a half months. For 10 years, he'd never gone longer than three months between races. 
Now it's been nearly eight months. It was kind of hard to watch him go through that mentally, but all you can do is just be there for someone and just kind of offer a shoulder. And he may beat himself up a little bit, but it's just another lesson, you know, lesson 286. <laughs> One lesson that Lionel has learned from triathlon is that if something forces you out of your comfort zone, it's probably good for you. I think some of these lessons actually will get me in better shape than the overtraining and all that sort of stuff I was doing in the past. The next race in Lionel's crosshairs is the Subaru Ironman Montreblant, presented by Sportium. It's his last shot at qualifying for the 2019 Vega Ironman World Championship, but he's only had six weeks to prepare. I've never done such a short build for an Ironman. I'm nervous, I'm excited. Most importantly, I'm grateful to be back racing. I absolutely love this sport. Uh, it was so difficult to be taken out of it for even the short period that I was. Um, but I'm back and I'm excited to, to toe the line. Quest for Kona is brought to you by Gatorade Endurance, formulated for farther. Nestled in the Laurentian Mountains in the Canadian province of Quebec, Montreblant is a quaint alpine village steeped in French-Canadian charm. A 90-minute drive from bustling Montreal, it draws visitors from around the world who come here to explore Montreblant's national park. Being in Montreblant is a bit of a homecoming for Lionel. He has done Ironman Montreblant twice before, finishing second last year. One of his closest rivals, fellow Canadian Cody Beals, is also racing. As the defending champion, Cody is the one to beat. I would say there's two races right now that pique my interest the most, Kona being number one and Montreal being number two. So I would be coming back to this race regardless of the injury. It's just now I'm coming back because it's my only shot to get to Kona. This was kind of a tight turnaround to come here and to, you know, try and be in peak form off of literally six weeks worth of training. Uh, I certainly am in, in good form. I'm not in the best form I've ever been in. I've never been more excited to race. Uh, so who, who knows? This is, I'm actually quite interested to see how I perform. As the sun rises over Montreblant, Lionel tends to all the race morning gear checks. The race nerves are palpable, but mostly he feels lucky to be back at an Ironman start line. He's excited for the biggest race experiment of his career. He's not sure if he'll punch his Kona ticket, but the prospect makes his adrenaline jump. With the firing of the start gun, the pro men are off, breaking the smooth surface of Lac Tremblant. The 2.4 mile single loop swim course gives athletes a clear view of the surrounding peaks soaring into the clear blue skies. The stronger swimmers surge ahead and Lionel finds himself alone for the entire swim. Lionel hits the swim exit in 51.48 just over a minute behind Cody and in eighth place heading onto the bike. I was actually quite happy with my swim, even though I got gapped pretty much immediately from the front pack. The nice part was that I could see the front pack the entire swim, so that means they weren't that far ahead. The 112 mile two loop bike course is one of the most scenic in all of Ironman racing. It passes through pristine mountain terrain, quaint villages, and a cluster of alpine lakes, giving athletes a major climb and fun descent. Lionel is charging on the bike. By mile 50, he's made his way to the front of the race. Cody Beals, his rival, is close behind. There's an ego component to this. The moment I caught him, I threw that plan completely out the window and went to the front and basically pulled the entire race. You know, with hindsight, it was not a very good tactical decision. And I had really had no business doing it, quite frankly, with the training that I'd done. Lionel was the first to reach transition after posting a four hour, 15 minute ride. 
It's the fastest of the day, but he knows he's overdone it. He's currently in first place with a marathon to go. <laughs> the Subaru Ironman Mantra Blanc, presented by Sportium Marathon Run Course, follows two loops through Emerald Green Forest, passing a cascading waterfall and hugging the shores of Loch Tremblant before the finish at Tremblant Resort. Cody is just a few minutes behind Lionel and is the stronger runner of the two. By the half marathon mark, Lionel's fear about overbiking is coming to fruition. The pain becomes too much and he slows to a walk. With only 10K to go, Cody makes the pass. This is why I love racing, it's because you get used to the feelings experienced in races. And you know, the second half of a marathon in an Ironman is extremely painful. And so the moment the pain got really deep, I just started walking. Having to go deep into your, your mind, your body, your soul, and having to, to face the adversity at some point, and having to pull through and to find you know something you didn't think you had. Wherever Lionel goes from here, in sport and in life, he's already come farther than he ever thought possible. It's a powerful display of personal metamorphosis. It is both a return to self and a total self-reinvention. Lionel crosses the finish with a 2.53.58 marathon. Lionel's official time of 8.05.38 is more than 20 minutes faster than third place. Standing at the finish line, the realization settles in. He's going to Kona. I enjoyed every minute of it. I enjoyed the blood, the sweat, the tears. I'm just so happy to be back here racing. So, October 12th. You gonna be there? I'll be there until I can't walk in. In future episodes of the Iron Man Quest for Kona, fueled by Gatorade Endurance, watch five athletes as they attempt to qualify for the 2019 Vega Iron Man World Championship. Follow us on our Facebook Watch channel, Iron Man Now, for full race week coverage. <laughs>